If you're looking for a fun project to do on your new Singer SE 9180, one of the things is to stitch out some decorative stitches or stitch them all out and you'll have like a little stitch book of references. As you can see, they always look 10 times better stitched out than they do on the screen. I'm also going to be showing some things about tension. So what I've done is before when I had the same thread in my needle as I did in my bobbin, it's a little hard to show tension changes, but I switched to some variegated thread. That's it's giving us some fun look on this fabric. And so I am going to link at the end to our video that we do on tension, and then that way you can learn more about it. But for here, what I wanna do is just show you a couple things about decorative stitches and then really give you a boost to go do them on your own. Maybe find some fun thread that you've done, and we have a video as well on how to make the ultimate stitch book in the description below. So you do need to have some stabilizer, so some tearaway stabilizer would be good. Usually I do one or two layers for for what I'm sewing, but with embroidery, I always do two layers. And really, you should do two here. Or just get a nice, stiff, heavier tearaway because some of the stitches are gonna be more dense than others. So one of the things you can do, and I'm already in the middle of one, so I'm gonna just continue on. You can see we're in kind of the second tab with all the decorative stitches, and you can um, move from side to side and get to screen after screen after screen. So yes, you can hold your foot on the foot control and just go ahead and stitch, but you can also use the same button you use to run the embroidery machine, which is the button with the go button or play button. So I'm gonna use this and I'm also gonna show you one more thing, like how do we get the pattern to end nicely at the end? So not just like half of a flower or part of a heart when we're here. So what we're gonna do is as it's sewing, so while you have the foot on your foot control or while this button is pushed, I'm gonna be reaching up to the scissor button and pushing it while I'm sewing. What else that'll do is tell the machine that I'd like it to finish the pattern I'd like it to lock it at the end of that pattern and then also cut, which it will do all at once. And then I'll lift up the foot and pull the fabric out. So I'm gonna push the start button. You can adjust how fast this goes. So if you don't want it to go very fast, you can adjust with the speed right here. You can push that all the way up for the decorative stitches. And I'm just using the last stitch as kind of a guide. As I get close, here we go, pushing the button. It's gonna stitch down. There's the locking of those stitches kind of heard the cut at the end. And when I lift this up, I can just pull it out and I have exactly what I'm looking for for those decorative stitches. Now, I did mention I I'll do more on tension, but I do bring the tension down just a little bit. I want the threads to the from the top to pull around to the back. So remember I said I had the hot pink in the bobbin. So I wanna see some of the colorful thread on the back and I wanna see some of the bobbin thread on the back. But what that does is it makes it so you don't have bobbin thread showing on the top. And when you do decorative stitches, that's what you're trying to get kind of dialed in. Now, when you're doing a straight stitch, you want it so both the stitches are balanced where it's, it's you know, you can't tell what side you've stitched from. And that's usually when your tension is somewhere around four. But for decorative stitches, I like to kind of go down to three. And then once again, it always tells me what foot I should be using. So in the decorative stitches, you'll usually see foot B is a great one. I also love an open toe foot, but this particular foot has a cutout. So see how there's like, after the needle stitches the, the stitch, that there's room for the density of the decorative stitch to not get hung up as it would on the foot A. But the foot B is for decorative stitches. And it's just so fun just to go ahead and for example, just pick the next stitch on the row. It shows it here. We can start back up at the beginning, lower the presser foot down, maybe line it up on the last row, and then kind of sit back and enjoy what it looks like as it stitches out. And as you get a little closer to the end, we can touch that scissor button once again. So I hope you'll check out how to make a stitch book and then also jump over to learning more about tension. But that was kind of the quick version of tension in general. Okay, I just kind of guess some patterns are longer than others. And yes, you might run off the edge of your fabric a little bit, but all in all, I love having that lock at the end, the cut, 
and it's ready to pull out. And you can just have a nice little afternoon stitching out all the stitches. You could put these in like a um, some sheet protectors with some cardstock, or you could even on the cardstock label that these were your stitches, you know, 20 through 30. Whatever you want to do to kind of label them, or just take a, a pen and just write on your fabric. That's also really fun to do. So these are things that we do talk about. If you're even thinking of doing like the Stitching Cosmos online course, that's the one with the circles and all the decorative stitches and accessory feet. One of your first homework assignments is actually to stitch out all your decorative stitches. So I hope you'll have some fun with that. And I always love seeing pictures of what people do or just some of the pages of their threads and stitches that they have on their machine. All right, happy stitching.